Old maps are witness to a time you could walk from South America straight into the lush Antarctic. This 1570 map shows that Terra del Fuego, which is today the southern tip of South America, was at one time part of Antarctica. Australia was part of the Antarctic too, discussed in an older video. Again, we see unknown land north and south of the known world. Today, Tierra del Fuego is the southernmost tip of Argentina and Chile, as if split off from the Antarctic continent, or the sea levels have risen. A closer look reveals the two land masses aren't actually connected, you need bridges to reach the south. Here's a map showing town names of Antarctica, bottom of image. There are place names in the Antarctic. Where towns are named, there are also people. Antarctica was inhabited. I see Lago Delos, or Lake Delos, Sherra de Manadas, or Monad Mountains, Malkusadu, and other towns lost to historical memory. This engraving is by Dutch navigator Willem Schouten in a book published in 1619. It shows a scene in southern Patagonia, which back then was Tierra del Fuego, or Antarctica. If true to size, we see humans examining the skeleton of a giant, a giant skull beside normal size humans, birds that are bigger than ships, and penguins. In the same book, a star fort nearby. When the first Europeans arrived to the New World after the Cataclysm, they met naked or sparsely dressed natives. From history class and movies, I assume that indigenous people were dark-skinned. But on all early drawings and maps of South America of the time, they are white. It's a good guess as any to assume that their outdoor lifestyle over generations turned their skin darker. In fact, more recent travelers meeting upon the indigenous also found naked people in Tierra del Fuego, but by the 1800s, they had become darker. Here, we see an Antarctic Tierra del Fuego, separated from South America by the Magellan River. The Strait of Magellan is the waterway that also today separates the South American continent from Tierra del Fuego. The drawing is made from the Antarctic perspective. It's one of many examples showing the place fertile, warm and populated. Today, Tierra del Fuego is very cold. There are unusual town names with a pre-flood feel to them, like Draconis. We see a variety of languages. There's Diestengi, which is German for the first narrow. Then we have Dutch-sounding places such as Grootwal, or Big Whale, and Verbeek, the Jewish-sounding place, Abraham, and several Spanish labels. This clearly points to a kind of borderless world where anyone could travel around and claim land. The indigenous of Tierra del Fuego are the Yagan people. The encyclopedia says. The Yagan, also called Yagan, Yagan, Yamana or Yamana, are a group of indigenous peoples in the southern cone. Their traditional territory includes the island south of Isla Grande de Tierra del Fuego, extending their presence into Cape Horn, making them the world's southernmost human population. The Yagan language, also known as Yamana, is considered a language isolate. The Yagan were traditionally nomads and hunter-gatherers, who traveled by canoe between islands to collect food. The men hunted sea lions, and the women dove to collect shellfish. The name Yagan is interesting. The word Jagen in ancient German means to hunt. And to hunt is precisely what they did. Simple. Another indigenous people in the Tierra del Fuego were called the Zegnum. Zeilg is ancient German for seal, an animal that figures prominently in their mythology. The encyclopedia says this about them. Zegnum male initiation ceremonies, the passage to adulthood, was called Hain. Nearby indigenous peoples, the Jagen and Hosh, had similar initiation ceremonies. The word Hain is an often used word of ancient German. It refers to initiation ceremonies, places of sacrifice, temples, altars, sacred places. In their Hain ceremonies, they identified with entities from other realms. To merge with these entities, they painted and dressed themselves to look like them. To me, these have a lower astral feel to them. The long pointed masks are seen in dozens of famous horror movies, such as Silent Hill, because they represent well-known lower astrals, or demons. The last of the Zegnum were kidnapped, enslaved, and portrayed as animals in zoos across Europe. I guess the Germans who came for viewing them in their zoos had no idea they were looking at their own genetic brothers and sisters. Strange world. The primary god of the Zegnum was called Timokl, which is ancient German Timokel, or the Maker El. The goddess of the underworld was called Selten, which is Alp in the German word for mountains. 
The German word for nightmare is Albtraum or Albdream, because scary things were linked to the underworld. The ancestral Zegnum who are said to have created this realm were called the Huvin, which is German for the heights or higher places. The heights people form the earth and waters. These Huvin were sent here from beyond the celestial dome in the sky. The encyclopedia says this about the Hosh people, a word we easily recognize as the German word Hoss, meaning house in English, same sound. Hosh was the name given them by the Selknamorona people, while the Yamanar Yagan people called them Edelamona, meaning Eastern Ona. Several authors state that their name for themselves was Manikonk or Manikonk. Martin Goosen reported, however, that in the Hosh language, Manikonk simply meant people in general. Berlung notes that Hosh has no meaning in the Zegnamona language, while Hosh means kelp in the Yamani Yagan language. Since the Zegnamona probably met the Yamani Yagan people primarily in Hosh territory, Furlong speculates that the Zegnamona borrowed Hosh as the name of the people from the Yamani Yagan language. It doesn't take any research to realize that the Yagan, Zegnam and Hosh were the same people sharing customs in similar languages. I don't know why academics have such a hard time understanding even the most rudimentary facts. The Zegnam were called Ona, and the Hosh were called Eastern Ona. The Yagan were also called Yamana, which is ancient German for the men of God, Yamana. The Hosh called themselves Manikonk, which has the same meaning. The first expedition led by James Cook encountered the Hosh in 1769. Captain Cook wrote that the Hosh are perhaps as miserable a set of people as are this day upon Earth. HMS Beagle, with Charles Darwin aboard, visited Tierra del Fuego in 1832. Darwin noted the resemblance of the Hosh to the Patagonians he had seen earlier in the voyage, and stated they were very different from the stunted, miserable wretches further westward, apparently referring to the Yamana. Wikipedia tells us that Yagan is a language isolate, unrelated to any other language. This is easily be debunked by looking at just a few words from a Yagan dictionary. The word for flame and light is Sola. In ancient European, Sol is the sun. The word for witch and sorcerer is Caspix. This derives from the ancient German word Casper, a magical figure that Disney turned into Casper the ghost. The word for priest is Prista. The word for god is Watniwa. As previously taught, Iwa was ancient German for eternal, and Wa or Va meant sacred. So, their word for god is the sacred eternal. Seems pretty clear to me. The word for love is Kur, which is ancient German for cure. The word for dirty is dirty, an obvious loan word from English. Let's take something more difficult. I found the word Ludamaka, which I at first don't understand. Its translation is to hollow out. I look into my German dictionary for loot and find that one meaning is to work clay or mud, to hollow clay or mud. The word then is, hollow make, Ludamaka. The word for cut is asakata, an example of an incorrectly understood phrase. The indigenous person was saying asokata, an ancient German phrase meaning this is how to cut it. The Zegnams say, the humans, were created by a being, called Elel. This video is just an introduction to something I find really fascinating. If you find it interesting, I'll continue in part 2.